Do they saw what I'm third movement? I'm bringing part two of the um, addiction um, video I was working on. And uh, we talked about um, falling in love with Jesus. And uh, we talked about walking in the spirit, right? We, then we talked about surrendering um, that that whole I, whatever you whatever you going through, whatever you're, 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 you're facing, whatever your addiction is, surrendering, telling 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 God, you know, I, I failed. I can't do it no more. I can't. We think I don't know. <clears throat> Excuse me. We think that um, we can live a life that God is gonna say, "Oh, that that's shocking to me." Like we think we can have a sin in our life that God is gonna say, "Whoa, that's shocking to me." When we have the picture of Jesus on the cross with every sin, so for Jesus to be up there for sins, that means the sins had to be committed. It means he had to know the sin that was gonna be committed. So you're not gonna you're not gonna shock God. The whole idea that I'm going to shock God with my failures, it's, it's not going to happen. Matter of fact, God is want you to, God works best when people say, okay, I failed, I've made mistakes. That's when he's ready to come in and it's easier for him to do the work in you that he wants to do already. You know, I, I even look at my personal life and say, not thank God for, for my failures, but say thank God that I was able to go to him with my failures and overcome my failures and they made me a better person. We, we get this idea that we're going to walk through life perfect. And, I, and, and I'm going to tell you, I was one. I was one. I thought that, you know, uh, we, especially coming up in the, in, in, in the Christianity faith, where I thought, okay, I had to be sinless. I had to live a, a life that was perfection. But not realizing that I'm a sinner that means I'm going to sin, so there's no, no there's no such thing as perfection until I truly have Jesus Christ, until I truly walk in Jesus, until I truly walk in the things of God. You see what I'm saying? So we get we, we get it twisted, like, like there's going to be a shock to God when we go to him with our sins, when we go to him with our failures, when we go to him with our addictions, right? There's no shock. So we talked about um, that, and then we was talking about... Um, uh, I'm using, you know, walking in the Word, throwing the Word of God. You know, knowing the Bible from a person-to-person -person thing is, is really underrated in our Christianity. Right? The Bible talks about um, faith come by hearing and hearing the Word of God. Now, the reason why I say it's hearing because at the time, everybody, everybody didn't have a Bible. Right? Everybody... Uh, you went to the temple and heard the Bible being read. And then some people who, some of the teachers who, some of the people that were readers, they were also teachers. Not all readers were teachers. But some of them was teachers and was able to teach the, uh, the the things that they read to you or teach the things of God or they was in the Holy Spirit and they was able to, to teach like Jesus. Jesus was a teacher. Jesus was one of those who was able to go and read the Bible and then he was also able to teach the Bible. It was rare to have a reader that wasn't a teacher. That was very rare, but you had some cases of it. So the whole idea is knowing the word of God. See, you can't throw the word of God at your temptations when you don't know the word of God. So it's very key that we, we, we have to get into the word of God. We have to study the word of God for ourselves. And we're no longer in a place where we just need to go into a temple and hear the word of God. We're not in that place anymore. It's good to go to a temple and hear the word of God, which is church. It's good to go to a church service and hear the word of God, but we can't depend on that. We can't depend on having the Bible open in our lives on Sundays and Wednesdays or Sundays and Thursdays or whatever day you have Bible study. We can't depend on that. It has to be a, a lifestyle of just living in the word of God, just living in the Bible. That's the whole picture of, of our faith. You know, that's why it's so important to get the word to all, to get the word of God to all of the nations. That's why it's so important we have all these organizations, excuse me. That's why it's so important we have all of these organizations trying to get the word of God out, trying to get more Bibles out. You know, we got Biblica and all these different places trying to get the word out there, trying to get Bibles and Bibles in different languages out there because it's important for people can have a way to overcome their, 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 their addictions. So, so that, that was one thing. I, I, I'm kind of rushing and I apologize because I'm almost at my first destination. I'm trying to do it all. Uncle Shot.
But um, the, 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 the fourth thing we can do is get in community. I think community is lost. We think when we talk about community, we're talking about a, 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 a group of people at church. No, what I mean by community is get a group about, if, you, if you're a dude and say you're struggling with porn, get a group about four or five people that you know that you can open up to, that you can maybe like once a week have breakfast for them, with them. Maybe once a week um, have a phone conversation, you know. Once a week get together and play some ball, play some basketball and whatever, where you can be open and you can have that community where you can say, you know, I'm struggling with this, where they can pray for you, where they can help you, where they can literally, what the Bible says is to love each other, is literally uh, to, to, to go on and, and take on on, on on whatever you're going through. So if you're my brother and you're struggling with porn, I should be struggling with my porn, with, not with my porn, but with porn because you're struggling with it. So I should be saying, okay, what can I do? Okay, I got to understand. He's... Oh um, man, he, he we can't go here because you know what, man? He he he. It might be women there with with such thing that may set off a, a episode, so we can't do that. So it becomes my struggle now, right? And that's the whole idea of community that we struggle with each other, and not the whole idea that okay, we're gonna see you on Sunday and maybe have dinners after Sunday and and, and how is the family and no, no no no, we get into the meat of things. We get to the meat of struggles. We get into the meat of the hurts. We get into the meat of pain. And that's what I mean by community. And some people say, you know what, I got two or three people. That's something. That's start. The more, I, I, I would say for community, for, for, for you to be have a people that's going to help you, help you be accountable, I would say keep it to five or six. I think, uh, and I think whatever you, you're dealing with, um, you want people that's kind of like dealt with that are people who, who, who have an idea of, okay, what that, that, to be with that is it's like I'm sorry I didn't say that correctly people who are going to come and say okay I dealt with that or say okay I understand that what you're dealing with whatever your um, addiction is um, I, I really want to make that importance I really want to want to speak on the importance of, of community because we get it twisted as in like some church family or we get it twisted as our family like our cousins and stuff like that. No, maybe some people in your family that you see as friends, maybe they're not out, are, 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 are able to deal with that um, addiction that you're you're going through. So some of the things you need to do is get find people, even if it's just people on the internet that you know that you, that, that you just build a relationship over time on the internet and you can get to the place where you can trust them. And you just be open with them and, and, and they be able to see everything you're going through and they be able to help you. You know, but it's just that whole idea of having a group of people in your life that's going to keep you accountable, that's going to be able to understand all that you went through. Like, they're going to be able to understand if, you, if you're going through a porn addiction that they, that they can understand. They're going to be able to understand that you're going through a drug addiction. They can understand. Like, whatever that addiction is, and if you have multiple addictions, you want to seek people that have dealt with multiple addictions. You know, um, I, I really want to say this, uh, especially to dudes. And a lot of my videos, I try to cater to um, uh, um, to dudes, and it's not because um, you know sex is anything. I just think that men men are being lacked. Reaching men is being lacked in the church. Like there's a lack of reaching men in the church. There's more help for women, and it should be, but we have to start even it out so we can be have a better people. You see what I'm saying? So a lot of times, the most um, most of the videos I do, I kind of cater them towards uh, men. Um, I did a video um, on, and it's going off task, and I'm gonna bring it back. But I did a video on, on love, nine, uh, on love rated 99. And that was talking about loving people with the understanding of I'm trying to do it through video games. So um, it, if you see that video, and if you're a, a lady, you see that video, it may not pertain to you, but it's something in there that may help you. So, but that's why I come from this whole idea of trying to reach men. All right, so getting back, um, the, I was saying dudes. There are dudes out there who have been and overcame many addictions at one time or, or over time that, that's ready to walk beside you. You see what I'm saying? Like, I'm not finna tie my hands. I've came, I've overcame so many addictions. Like I said earlier, you know, if it wasn't for me to have those addictions and overcome them, not putting emphasis on addictions, but putting emphasis on, on overcoming addictions, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. I wouldn't be able to tell you the things that I tell you right now. And it's all because of Jesus Christ. 
So seek out people who, and don't be afraid, man. Don't be afraid to, to, to open up and say, okay, I got all of these issues. Because you know what? If they're able to help you, they had all them issues. Or they had a lot of issues similar. And I think that's one of the things that we do in Christianity that I hate. That I absolutely hate is we try to fake our way out of stuff. Or we try to fake our way into stuff. I am nowhere near trying to fake myself. I'm saying, dude, here it is. is. I've been through addictions. I've been, I've overcame things. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. Not because of me, because of the love in me, the love of Christ that's in me that says, okay, I have to do my part. So that's where this whole thing is coming from. The video is getting long. I still got two more, um, one more thing, and I'm gonna do a third video, uh, and we're gonna be um, basically be talking about um, overcoming sin. I'm sorry, overcoming um, addictions, and and then we're gonna probably talk about a, a few more things in it. So um, check out the third video. They saw how I'm third movement. I'm out.